A team of CDC investigators this morning is in Brazil. The group is examining the possible link between Zika and the birth defect microcephaly. Washington State yesterday reported its first case of the virus. That means at least 93 travel-related Zika cases are now documented in the United States. Omar Villafranca visited the Texas lab spearheading the research to find a vaccine. He is in Dallas. Omar, good morning. Good morning. After a rain, standing water like this is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And here in Dallas, they won't start spraying to kill the mosquitoes until the spring. But there is a laboratory in Galveston, Texas, that's working with the Brazilian government to come up with the vaccine for Zika. Scientists there have been studying the virus for decades and were among the first to warn of the potential dangers of Zika back in 2009. The dirty white powder in this glass vial is the Zika virus. We have a sample of it. <laughs> Dr. Robert Tesh of the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston has known about Zika since the 1960s. Yes, until the virus really got to Brazil, and, and there were a lot of cases, nobody really was interested in Zika. Times have changed. Times have changed, and now we realize how much we don't know. In the last year, research has ramped up due to an explosion of outbreaks in Central and South America. Tesh says scientists have learned more about Zika in the last two months than they have in almost 70 years. And a year ago, how many people were calling asking for Zika? <laughs> Never. No one. No. Zika may be linked to the birth defect microcephaly. The condition is marked by abnormally small heads in babies due to stunted brain growth. Brazil is ground zero in the fight against Zika. We got to see the people that were being affected. Where Dr. Shannon Rossi recently traveled and saw firsthand the devastating effects of the virus. Did you learn anything in the field about Zika that you wouldn't learn here in a lab? I don't always think about the human toll, not when I'm so wrapped up in my own little microcosm on the bench. And so to take time out and to really see what's going on with the humans, the mothers, the children, the entire families that are affected by this, is absolutely, it's heartbreaking and it's critical, I think. The University of Texas Medical Branch is home to one of the world's largest collection of viruses. Nearly 7,000 samples are stored at the facility. With the focus now on Zika, Rossi and a team of scientists are working on a quick test to detect the virus in humans and eventually develop a vaccine. Are we closer to a vaccine? Yes, every single day that People like me and my fellow colleagues around the bench were one step closer to a vaccine. We sort of go from crisis to crisis. In 2009, scientist Scott Weaver warned Zika, among other mosquito-borne viruses, could make its way to the U.S. Today, he says, finding a solution is going to take time and research money. We need to develop better and faster ways to develop products like vaccines, and we've got to try to get ahead of these viruses. The National Institutes of Health says a Zika vaccine could be ready by the end of 2017. Infectious disease doctors are always keeping an eye out for the next possible epidemic. And with all this talk of Zika, scientists that we talk to say the flu bug, which kills thousands of Americans every year, is still at the top of their list. Nora? Got it. Omar, thank you so much.